Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video I'm going to walk you through my process for creating a pen and ink drawing. Today's drawing is of the al Khazneh temple in the ancient city of Petra in Jordan. I hope you can use this video to help you in your own creative journey. P please feel free to ask me any questions in the comments below. Thank you very much. Here you can see the reference photo I use for this drawing. When choosing a reference photo, keep in mind that unless you're going to manipulate the photo, your finished drawing will only be as good as your reference photo. So the reference photo needs to be good, of good quality and it also needs to be aesthetically pleasing with dramatic lighting and an interesting composition. When I'm drawing in a monochromatic scheme, like here with pen and ink, I find it helps to desaturate the image into a black and white image. This allows you to concentrate on just the values. Here are all the materials I've used in creating this piece. The paper I've used is a wonderful Strathmore tone tanned at the size of A2. I love this paper, it's excellent. For sketching in my initial pencil line work, I use this mechanical pencil. A ruler? I find plastic better than metal because I have found in the past that metal rulers can leave a mark on your paper, which is obviously not very good. I need a bull eraser to erase any of my pencil work errors in the initial sketching stage or to remove any of the pencil lines once my ink lines are done. I love this pen just because of its tiny nib of 0.03. I like keeping my line weight as thin as possible. This doesn't smudge as it dries instantly, so they're a very good pen. I find Copic markers to be a bit too expensive, so I use Pro markers which are almost as good and at half the price. For this drawing I use a warm grey set, 1 to 5. For the whites in this piece I've used a white charcoal pencil. This one is made by Pasta and is called 8803 Premium. The black colour pencil I use is made by Lyra. This comes from a set of black and greys that they do. It's an excellent set. And finally, for a smooth texture blend, I use a tortillion blending stump on the white charcoal pencil. So once the pencil sketch is done, and I'm happy with it, it's time to ink the drawing. This gives us the contours of all the objects within the drawing. Because I'm using alcohol markers to add the values to this drawing, my use of hatching is limited to adding texture and for the darkest places within the drawing. In this drawing, there really isn't many areas of solid black, only here in between some of the brickwork and then a small arch above the door on the left.
Here we can see I'm using a ruler to make sure that my lines are straight. This is important for not only having nice straight lines, but also to make sure that I'm keeping to the correct perspective vanishing points. If the perspective is incorrect, then the image won't make any sense. Again, here you can see that I'm putting in some hatching just to indicate the texture and the darker form in the cracks and holes in the rock surface. So now I have started with the alcohol markers. With these you have to work from light to dark. The alcohol ink on this paper takes roughly 20 seconds to dry, then you can see its true value. You can layer the same area of ink with the same ink value to darken the value slightly. This gives you a mid-value range of each pen's value. As you can see, I then go over the top of the already placed down ink with the next darker value marker to darken the area where required. Here we can see that I am using the white charcoal pencil to add any brighter areas that are brighter value than the paper toned value. So if we take into consideration the value scale, the paper zone value is around 3 on the 10 step scale. Please click the link above if you want to understand more about the value scale. Alcohol markers cover from about 4 to 9 on the value scale whilst the fine liner is a value of 10. The white charcoal pencil is used for the values of 2 and 1. Value 2 is reached by using a low pencil pressure and value 1 is gained by using strong pressure.
I try not to add my darkest or lightest value areas in too early. Instead, I tend to build up to them in progressive layers, starting from a mid-range value. As you can see me do here, these areas in the cracks are quite dark, but I start with a mid-dark value and add dark layers as I go. This helps me keep my values balanced. As you can see here, just as I can add texture and form with the use of darker values, the white charcoal pencil can also be used in this way. I use a black colouring pencil to help in putting in smooth transitions from the darker values to lighter values. This is most helpful in creating soft shadows. I use very soft pencil pressure and build up concentration and value by layering the pencil marks. This gives me full control on how dark I want to make the area. In some places where I've used the white charcoal, I don't want it to appear to have a rough texture, so I use a blending stick to smooth it into the paper's tooth. You can also use the markers to draw over the top of an area of white charcoal. This removes the white charcoal off the paper, thus adding a darker value back into the area of white charcoal.
Here is a great example of how important it is to keep the direction of your drawing strokes in the direction of the form. My strokes here follow the direction of the camel's fur and hair. All that remains from me is to say thank you very much for watching. I do hope that this video has helped at least some of you. Please do not hesitate to ask any questions in the comments below or any critiques on my video to help me improve my future videos. As always, please hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Goodbye and take care out there.